touchdown in India. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau among the world leaders descending on New Delhi Friday for the G20 summit with talks set for this weekend. Before the traditional tarmac readings, security stepped up and some of India's capital brought to a standstill. Many schools closed and local authorities demolished slums ahead of the annual summit. Stray monkeys and dogs removed from the streets. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government denies the work was aimed at presenting a tidier image to G20 guests, but activists and those who called the area home aren't buying it. What I think you will see is a disaggregated. Looking ahead to G20 talks, this foreign policy expert based in New Delhi expects most of the summit's joint statement will be agreed upon by all sides taking part. But he expects friction when it comes to messages surrounding Russia's war on Ukraine. There'll be two, three, four paras on which there'll be disagreements because they would relate to the conflict and, and the different perceptions about these conflicts uh, in, in, among the member states of the G20. India's G20 chair says that the leader statement is almost ready to be presented to those attending the weekend summit. But the European Council president says it's difficult to predict if a consensus can be reached. I don't think that this G20 will resolve in two days, all the problems of the world. Debt and climate change are also on the agenda for the heads of the world's largest economies. A couple of notable no-shows, Russian President Vladimir Putin not attending. And for the first time, China's Xi Jinping is skipping out on the summit. Reps for the two countries are going instead. Before the weekend's G20 meetings officially got underway, there was a message directly aimed at those leaders coming from the UN Secretary General, who's also in India. Antonio Guterres is saying to the G20 leaders that they have the power to reset the global climate crisis that he says is spiraling out of control. The climate crisis is worsening dramatic, but the collective response is lacking in ambition, credibility, and urgency. Together, G20 countries are responsible for 80% of global emissions, he says. Adding half measures will not prevent full climate breakdown. Melissa Duggan, City News.